Next tonight, a Leeds law student who died after four remote GP consultations was likely to have lived if he'd been given a face-to-face -face appointment sooner. An inquest heard the failure to see David Nash in person during lockdown was a missed opportunity. Despite repeated calls to the NHS 111 and his local surgery, he died shortly after being admitted to hospital. His parents said they don't want anyone to go through the anguish they've suffered. As Phil Bodmer reports. Wise, loving and funny. A coroner's description of David Nash. The 26-year-old died in November 2020 after developing mastoiditis in his ear, causing an abscess on the brain. An inquest in Wakefield this week heard he made a number of calls to a Leeds GP practice and NHS 111 over a period of just 19 days. I've got pain behind both eyes, my sinuses, my back and my neck, and I've got temperature as well. Sinuses? Uh, sinuses in the back of the neck, so like the cheek area. His first phone call to Burley Park Medical Centre was on October the 14th. He rang again on the 23rd and 28th, complaining of neck pain, headaches and fever. His final call was with an advanced nurse practitioner on November the 2nd. It's this fourth call which the coroner said should have resulted in an urgent face-to-face -face consultation. That same day as his condition deteriorated, David made five calls to NHS 111 and was finally taken to hospital by ambulance. He died two days later. In reaching a narrative conclusion, the assistant coroner, Abigail Coombs, told the inquest on the 2nd of November 2020, there was a missed opportunity to direct David to seek face-to-face -face care during his GP appointment. She went on to say, had he been directed by the GP practice, it's more likely than not, he would have undergone neurosurgery approximately 10 hours earlier than he did which at the time, she said, it's more likely than not, would have been successful. He was our wonderful son, brother and friend. He had a strong sense of right and wrong and always looked out for others. We in turn have spent two years seeking answers on his behalf and to make sure that others don't die as David did. We know that is what he would have wanted. David's parents, Andrew and Anne, said they were both saddened and vindicated by the findings. The inquest gives us a sense of closure, but the apology from the medical centre that treated David uh, only came through yesterday, uh, and that was an apology we've been seeking for, for a, a longer period. Like Andrew, I wish the apology from the practice had been slightly earlier, but we certainly always realised, I think in our heart of hearts, that he should have been seen that day. It's been a long struggle, and I think our grief is always going to be with us. We always will have grief and carry that with us because that's part of David. The coroner praised the family's dignity shown during the inquest, saying she hoped they'd found some of the answers to the questions they'd asked. Phil Bodmer, BBC Look North, Wakefield. And our thoughts are with David's family. Well, uh, earlier I spoke to Dr Richard Bawtree, who is a Leeds GP and former chair of the Medical Association. I asked him if we needed to be concerned about more consultations taking place remotely. Yeah, this was clearly a really tragic case uh, for everyone involved, um, and our heart goes out to the relatives you know, of this man. Uh, GP practices have been trying their level best to see as many patients as possible uh, face to face, but many of our patients uh, are now actively requesting telephone consultations uh, because it is more convenient for them. Uh, they can have that consultation from home or work without coming into the surgery, but it's clearly important that the clinician uh, gets the right balance and if they require uh, to examine the patient and see the patient face to face that they make that opportunity available to patients and that's what practices are trying to do. Yeah there are obviously benefits to having an appointment remotely but in this case the coroner ruled that David Nash was likely to have lived if he had been given that face to face appointment. Uh, do we need to be concerned that this could happen again? Uh, well clearly clinicians are, are becoming increasingly experienced uh, with telephone consultations uh, which, as you said, have increased uh, since the, the pandemic. Uh, but many clinicians now will insist uh, that patients do come into the surgery uh, for a face-to-face -face consultation and for a physical examination. In fact, we're seeing more patients than ever before. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why practices are so busy. But more appointments are now being made with non-GP clinicians. Again, is valuable expertise being lost as, as a result of this? 
Well, one of the concerns that we have is that we're not recruiting and retaining uh, enough GPs into our service. It's one of the problems that we have on a day-to-day -day basis that there isn't the capacity in our workforce, not just in terms of GPs, but practice nurses and others. We're really pleased uh, that some uh, new healthcare professionals are joining us like paramedics and pharmacists and physios. Uh, but nevertheless, we still do need more GPs and we need the government to have a proper workforce plan uh, to not only recruit more GPs, but particularly to retain the experienced GPs that we've got in the service who all too often are leaving because of the workload burden that they're facing. Dr Richard Vautry, thank you for your time this afternoon.